you better have something down in you that's worth dying for. It takes God to do that like that. I can't do that in myself. My name is Steve Ludwin, and I have a weird fascination with the serpent. Hidden in my understair closet, unbeknownst to my neighbors, are an array of very dangerous snakes. That's an Indian cobra. That's a tree viper. This is called a tangerine Honduran milk snake. That's called a green tree python. But it's beautiful, right? And I regularly milk and inject myself with their venom. The cobra venom helps when I'm skating. I've learned to actually start moving like a snake. It actually starts giving you power. Snakes have been historically feared and vilified as satanic, but I have always had a strong affinity with them. In this series, I am on a quest to discover the places where snakes lie at the heart of culture. Across America, there are Pentecostal church communities who drive out Satan with venomous snakes. An estimated 125 churches practice serpent handling in the United States, most of which are concentrated in rural Appalachia. People often judge us about serpent handling, but it's in the Word of God. Known as signs following Pentecostals, these churches believe in a literal interpretation of verses from the end of the Bible's Book of Mark, in which Jesus refers to his followers taking up serpents. These serpents are dead, but when he's praising, that's God. And it's not just snakes. Signs followers speak in tongues, handle fire, and drink a poisonous mixture of strychnine and water during church services. And when people are bitten during service, they don't believe in seeking medical attention, resulting in a series of deaths within the community. One day, I'd like to be just like my dad and my brother. I'd like to die with a rattlesnake bite in church. I've just arrived here in North Carolina where I'm about to meet a real live serpent preacher. A pastor called Jason has invited me to a shelter where he does outreach work with people with drug problems and homeless people. In North Carolina, on average, three people a day die from opioid overdoses, making the work the shelter does in the area crucial. Hey, how you doing? All right, how are y'all? Jason. Yes, I'm Steve. Jason. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come on in. As well as providing food and shelter, the mission focuses on rehabilitation through religious teaching. Before Jason brought his musical worship to the residents, I wanted to hear how snakes had become such a fundamental part of his life. Start from the beginning. How did you first get involved with serpent preaching? I had this copperhead that was about this big, and it never been touched. And I was looking at it, and I was praying. And I don't know, just something happened to me. And I began to speak in tongues real low. And just all my fear went away. And I reached and picked it up off the end of that hook. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus. I praise you, Lord. So snakes are just a part of life. And as far as in church, there is such a fear amongst the people here. I had a church here. I had a group of people who started handling serpents with me. And the contention amongst the other churches got so bad, this group would say, we're not coming down there if you're going to let them come because they were viewed so extreme. The outreach work Jason does is hugely personal to him. Before he became a serpent preacher, Jason also struggled with a crack addiction. What was it like the first time you tried it? Can you remember? Yeah, I remember it was accidental. <laughs> I, I didn't know how to roll a joint, and the girl that I was with, she was smoking crack and I was smoking marijuana. So I broke up some marijuana and put it on the can. What I didn't know was she burnt down a big piece of crack cocaine down on top of it. Ooh. So when I hit it, I went out in the yard and threw up two times. <laughs> I guess a good three or four months of just smoking it here and there, and then I got into a role where we were smoking it pretty constant. Yeah. I mean, my kids found me sleeping on a park bench one day, pulled wow. into a, a place, and there daddy was laying with a newspaper on his face. But I think through that, I'm able to sympathize with people who's gone through addiction because I've been through the same stuff. I've been homeless. I've been addicted. I've slept in the streets, and I know what it's like for nobody to care. Yeah. We wanted to reach people who were hurting, people who had been through things that we had been through and minister them through the Spirit. And I said, I would like to bring that here and do that for the people that nobody cares about. 
because it, it don't just handle snakes and drink poison and handle fire and shout and dance and speak in tongues. It will change you. Jason's faith had clearly helped him escape his addictions. I was excited to see him share his worship with those struggling with the same issues. We're going to take a moment and bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you. We come to you as humbly as we know how, knowing that we're nothing before you, Lord. But you are everything to us. Amen. As I'm a musician myself, Jason invited me to join the band. My background is more punk than snakecore Christian rock, but I was down to try. I used to go to church back when I was young in the shadows I ended up in a homeless shelter, and Jason was doing a ministry there. And once I got into the shelter and a few services, it sort of made me turn things around. I was real bad in the alcohol. I was in a hospital because I had, like, real bad thoughts of hurting myself. So the hospital just brought me here. I felt God for the first time. It was, you know, like, I can't even explain it to you. We have people who want to come in here and sing, and we have people who want to come in here and share testimony, and we have people who want to come and do a Bible study. God reaches people in different ways. Without God, I would be dead because my vices, my habits, my addictions would have killed me. I've heard people who do services with snakes, and I do not like snakes at all. I do not even play that, you know. I will not go to no service with snakes because I don't like them. Well, I certainly appreciate everybody that's come out and helped. Everybody's definitely been a help. Not that I've been much help, but I try. God bless you, and until next time, it's good to see you. Thank y'all. There weren't any snakes at the shelter as it's illegal to handle them in North Carolina. In the last century, it's been estimated that over 100 people have died whilst worshiping with serpents. Jason invited me the next day to attend a snake service at his late friend Randy's church in West Virginia, the only remaining state where it is legal. Randy was bitten whilst preaching and refused medical attention, a fundamental belief in the movement, as they see whether they live or die as part of God's plan. The church I was on my way to is now run by his brother, Chris, after the death of Randy and his father, both whilst preaching. So how long is this trip today that we're going to take? About five hours. We all travel. There's not a lot of churches and not a lot of people who's active in the faith. And if you find a place that's active, they will let you bring them in and actually have service like we do. Then we'll travel to go. Most serpent handling churches spawn out of large families. You know, they didn't believe in birth control. Like my mother, there's 20 children in my mother's family. So if you went to a church like the church I used to belong to, there might be five families in there that fills that whole building. And now it's very hard to get people, very hard to get people in. Are you gonna be handling some serpents today? All you gotta do is feel it. Once you feel it, you know, you feel that power come through you. Everything will fade out, you won't even hear the music. You won't even see the people. I mean, it's, it's a, it's an experience like nothing else you could ever experience in your life. All right, All right, we are here. Yes, we have arrived, fellas. I'm really excited to see the snakes more than anything, you know? I'm definitely gonna take a backseat pew. I don't think I'll be, um, you know, getting into the, this side of it. We're just not up here trying to put on a show, but there's a power that lives within us, and that power is called the Lord Jesus Christ. I arrived as Chris was psyching himself up to the moment I'd been waiting for, the unboxing of the serpents.
There were copperheads, rattlers. This was the closest I'd ever been to having a religious experience. But it was crazy they were throwing around these deadly snakes with reckless abandon, something I was increasingly less comfortable with. They had total faith in God's protection. Yeah, I've just had to come out for a quick breather. My heart's pounding. It's not, that's not what I expected. I thought, you know, they were just going to gently hold the snakes. But that was crazy. When he started swinging it around, and then when he stood on the snake, I was like, fuck this. Like, I was so close to grabbing that snake and getting the fuck out of there. Like, that's, that's, that's not cool at all. That is complete animal abuse. There's, there's no other definition for that. that I'm going to have to go back in there and calm myself down, and I'm just going to... I'm just gonna wait till it's over and then, then we'll have a chat. I was thinking, I was as low as I could go. Oh God, every place in my arm that I could poke a needle, there was a needle hole. I got spiritually sick. I got so spiritually sick. I found myself back and on the dope again. Back with putting the needles back in my arm. God. Tell about it, Chris. Holy God. What he's done for me. Oh, Bless him, Lord. If I die, I find out there's no heaven, I'm satisfied. Because he set me free out of addiction that I could not break free right. of my own self. Right. Oh, God. When I'm thirsty, and I need my water. Need you to her in. So if you think I'm crazy, just know that I'm crazy for Christ. I was surprised that even out of the shelter, the service still focused on drug addiction. This was clearly a pertinent subject to the congregation. People often judge us about serpent handling, but it's in the Word of God. When I handle serpents, I do it out of the Spirit of God. Any serpent we handle could, could take us out. That's the power of God, that, that God can shut the mouth. These serpents are deadly. But while he's praising, that's God. He has that faith that God is going to keep him alive. One day, I'd like to be just like my dad and my brother. I'd like to die with a rattlesnake bite in church. I've been in a lot of churches that do not want to reach out to addicts. That I've been kicked out of two churches because I'm an addict. Been through the whole family. My dad was a drunk. My oldest brother, Randy, he used to drink and was into drugs, and I guess like everything else, just followed the footsteps. I started with pot, and then it went to pills, and then it went to crack and meth, and then I was just doing everything. I've struggled from addiction myself, but God can deliver you from those things. When I came here, as soon as you walked through the building, it was a whole different feeling, like it was just uh, a relief. And that's the reason why I'm with Jason. I truly believe God sent Jason to me because if he hadn't, I'd be dead more than likely by now. This was the weirdest NA meeting I'd ever been to. 
Snakes are an important part of my life, but I'd never imagine them being the linchpin for a support network of addicts. After four hours, I presumed it was winding down. And by presumed, I mean desperately hoped with all my might. But then Jason stepped up to the mic. Finally, the service was coming to a close. I would now have the opportunity to chat to Chris and Jason about their treatment of the snakes. So I was really excited to come here today, and it, I was really enjoying myself. I thought the music was great. I was getting into it. But I have to say I have one criticism. When you were standing on the, the rattlesnake, that just kind of crossed the line for me. I can understand your, your view on that, but I want to tell you something you may not know. Standing on that serpent didn't hurt that serpent. You can take that car and run over that snake, and that serpent will keep crawling. So my little 200-pound body really didn't hurt that serpent. I don't know. I reckon people will go, well, that's, that's not on, you know, that's cruel to the animal. But anyway, I've said what I want to okay. say, so. If I wanted to go by people's advice and fill this church up, all I got to do is get rid of the serpents. But you know, I'm going to do what the Word of God tells me. And when God speaks and gives me the okay, I'm going to do what God tells me. Yes. Jason was telling me about, you know, he had addiction problems, and I was surprised to hear that you had addiction problems as well. I lost my father when I was 11 from this. He died with a serpent bite. Okay. And, uh, and I guess after that, I just got with the wrong crowd. When I went to that altar and I said, God, the life that I have now is not worth living. And when that instant, that addiction was gone. I never had to go to no rehab. I never went through no withdrawals. It was just gone. Is that when you started handling serpents? It wasn't like I just went to the altar and the next day I was handling serpents, you know. I had to learn God for myself. I had to read the scriptures, pray, get the, and get my own personal relationship with this man. And I've been bit twice, and it hurts. <laughs> when you've been bitten by a snake, have you ever gone? I went one time. I always said I wouldn't go. <laughs> but my breathing shut down. It was like trying to suck through a coffee straw. Wow. And I guess I just got scared. It wasn't that I was hurt and went to the doctor, and it wasn't that I was sick. It, I could not breathe. Yeah. And we lost my brother, well, I think this may be six years, and this was about two years ago. Is that Randy? Yes. And uh, the first thing I thought is, Lord, I don't want to put my mom through this again. Would you consider going to the hospital again? Hell, I learned from the first time to say I'd never go. Yeah. But here's my prayer to God, that if it ever happens again, then I'm willing to either suffer it out with the help of God or give my life and go on. Please give me enough faith to be able to let your will be done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Drive it was safely. It was different. Thank you for letting me uh, well, play was, guitar with you. Oh, that I, was that awesome. was really good. But uh, it's been wonderful meeting everybody. It's been yeah. really great meeting everybody. And I, I'm glad I got to come up. It's been a long time. I always do good when I come up. It's, it's like coming home. This has been a really wild day. I got into the music, surprisingly enough. I was clapping along, and when the snakes came out, I was like a kid in a candy store. I, was, I loved it. And I got on with them in the end. You know, we had a really good chat. It's kind of wild to think that most of those people that were in there had drug problems, but it seems to work. You know, they're all saying they didn't need AA, and they just asked for God's help with their addiction, and that was it. Chris doesn't seem to mind about the church's dwindling congregation that's only being kept alive by a couple of families. However bizarre it seems, this church feels like a real community. 
And if West Virginia joins the rest of America in banning serpent handling, I hope they find a way to maintain their support network, even if it's without deadly snakes. <laughs>